Okay, it's Sunday, so that means, against my better judgment, it's time to go on Reddit today and see what's going on. We've got a cat with us today as well. Probably not for very long, because he never likes to actually be here when this is happening. So what have we got today? Advanced Diva alt locations for Junkertown, plus nine other maps. What a steal of a deal that is. Should I focus on playing more diverse hero pool or being more experienced in certain heroes? You should focus on being more experienced in certain heroes. It's better to be really good at a few things than average at everything. A jack of all trades is a master of none. People have been going on about peeling a lot lately. I keep seeing stuff like this turning up everywhere. I mean, the moral of the story is if your support is being murdered by someone, you should indeed help the support stop getting murdered by the person that's trying to murder them. Who would have thought? I know. Symmetra Teleporter de uh, destroys itself. I mean, it does if you lose the objective. Um, While well, my team Symmetra placed the teleporter on defense before anyone was able to use it, the teleporter destroyed itself. Does it say it breaks it in the kill feed? Because I know that if you lose the objective, the teleporter just does destroy itself and Symmetra gets refunded uh, alt charge, but does it actually show up at dying in the kill feed? I, I see it so, f so infrequently that I don't actually know if it shows up in the kill feed for it dying. Uh, it does destroy itself if you lose the objective, though, yes. Or I suppose if you captured the objective, it probably also does the same thing. It's not often you see an, an attack Symmetra, though, so... What should our team comms be like? For reference, I'm talking about team play. We are so disorganized in between fights, and we struggle to have one shot caller due to ha no one having the right voice for it to be noticeable in a fight. Well, you just tell them to talk louder. <laughs> it's, uh, it's not necessarily a, a, an actual voice thing, Is it's more about the way you talk. It's all about talking from the diaphragm instead of from the throat. Um, though, really, the, the main thing about having... Oh, there he goes. There he goes. Goodbye. Was He was briefly here. Um, the... The main th reason to have a shot caller is to call out who you're focusing in a team fight, or uh, that's kind of it, really. Um, or to like try and arrange things between fights, like uh, hero switches and things like that, uh, if we're saving ults or if we're using ultimates, that kind of thing. Uh, the the big thing is just like calling people to focus in a fight. That's like the the biggest thing with a shot caller, and then there's like. Between fights, there's the more, like... Eh. Between fights, there's more people just, say, like, calling out information, you know? There's a guy over here, I've got my ult, he's probably got his ult. Uh, talking about switches, that kind of thing. And in a fight, uh, whether or not using ults. And then in fights, it's like, who's, who's being focused or who needs help, you know, if, if someone on your team is being focused. Uh, players of similar rank, both life coaching each other. Uh, I mean, seems very unnecessarily, I mean, I, I assume you don't mean both playing at the same time, that would be very awkward, or sure, whatever. Uh, there's no context behind this if that's important to anyone, but why did my team get full held on Numbani first against Roadhog Diva, Tracer, Junkrat, Mercy, and Zenyatta? Sounds like, uh, you just, your team is bad. Um, that's, that's you at least give me the other side of the fucking story. <laughs> you know, like, what was your team comp? Like, their team comp was quite bad, yes, but, because they had Roadhog Diva, but, like, what was yours? Changing from 27 inch to 24 inch. I'll oh, get a fucking 1% over here, get out of my face. Uh, personal stats, uh -huh. drop five, well, get good. Uh, any Zenyatta mains who can mentor? Nope. What is the point of push to talk for console? Uh, so you can call each other faggots, obviously, and other such uh, similar be things. There's uh, <laughs> fucking voice chat. Voice chat's a waste of time on PC. I, I can only imagine the wretched skive and hunt. Sky, wretched hive of scum and villainy that you must find on consoles, especially Xbox. Are you guys able to react to close range Earth Shatter? I actually did this earlier because they were uh, there's this whole thing on here where you test your 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 business. I was uh, 248 ms out of. Uh, now I'm talking, so it's a little bit slower. I was in the top 74 percent. Whoa, very impressive. I know. 
yes, I can react to a close range. I mean, close range doesn't matter compared to like long range. So, like the extra 0.1 seconds on it traveling to you is not likely to be the difference, though it can be. I am able to react to an earth shatter, though. Yes, it is not. I I, I beat you by like 25. Easy. Uh, the the if you're like looking for the animation that's harder than listening to the audio cue because the uh, the animation is a little bit ambiguous on the startup but he does just say hammer down the se- as soon as you push the cue key so it's easier to listen to the voice line this is a, some people are like uh Reinhardt sh- an allied Reinhardt should have a voice line for when he uses his ultimate because he he doesn't currently you just hear the crash and i i honestly would hate that because I, I if I'm waiting for the enemy Reinhardt to use Earth Shatter, it's just as soon as I hear Reinhardt's voice, I push the key basically. So if I had to actually decipher which, if it was mine or their Reinhardt, that would probably be more annoying, honestly. Um, and I, I wonder if that's the point, but uh, that sounds a little bit too sensible for the Overwatch team, you know. Uh, mouse sense problem. Is it normal to get used to a sensitivity to a point where it becomes a little too high? For instance, I play it in, uh, boy, madman. Six entire sensitivity. Gets a little floaty. Is it okay to further to, I mean, yeah. Go, like, if you, if it feels weird, try changing it. How long do you try out sensitivities? You usually know pretty fucking fast um, if it's uh, annoying one way or the other. It doesn't take that long to figure it out, usually, like a game or two, and you'll know. Uh, I'm a master player as D.Va, but I'm learning on a smurf DPS. I don't understand why most of the time I got gold damage and not gold eliminations, and I don't understand if it's okay or when it means I'm, I'm playing bad. I would much rather have gold eliminations than gold damage. I've just also realized that I've been make, banging my mouse on the table the entire time. Uh, I would much rather have gold elims than gold damage. If you have gold damage but no elimination medal at all, That probably means that you're mostly just doing trash damage that isn't actually amounting to anything. Because the only hit point that actually matters is the last one, really. So if you have gold limbs but no elimination, gold uh, damage but no eliminations, you are probably just doing mostly trash damage and it isn't actually converting into anything. And yeah, you're doing a lot of trash damage, but trash damage is still trash damage at the end of the day. You have to actually be able to secure the kill. Uh, if they all if they always survive, it didn't really amount to much. Looking for help countering this comp: Diva, Hog, Zarya, M- Moira, McCree, and Genji. Uh, what are good counters? Let's see. Well, so Winston's really good because McCree and Genji. The problem is that Winston's bad against tanks, but the only tank there that actually kills him is Roadhog. So. Uh, Winston's good for, like, this side. And then uh, Reaper is always good versus triple tanks. So it was something like uh, Winston, Roadhog, because Roadhog is also good against tanks. So it'd be something like Winston, Roadhog, Reaper. Uh, Who would the other DPS be? Probably Soldier or McCree. Uh, cause the Genji is naturally less good against the team that has more tanks on it, and McCree also, so probably Soldier or McCree is the other DPS, and then the two supports kind of wouldn't matter that much, but a Zenyatta would be really nice because triple tank. Uh, and how might you do it? Try, have Winston kill these boys, and this, hopefully this boy, and Roadhog and Reaper kill all these boys, basically. Um, anytime there's more than two tanks, Reaper is probably going to have a really good time, as will Roadhog, uh, typically. I already looked at that one. What is a better role to fill, tank or support? Definitely tank. Tanks have more agency over the game than supports. Uh, also people, like, if, if somebody doesn't know how to play a tank, it's really evident that they don't know how to play a tank. Like, if they don't know how to play a support, they can, like, it's not the end of the world at the end of the day, you know, he's kind of just still heal people at the end of the day. If they don't know how to play a tank, they do nothing but feed, so, uh, filling as a tank is better than filling as a support, usually. Throwers and low masters. I hover between mid and master to high diamond. Ah, oh, it's me. 
Lowmaster has so much throwers than more mid-diamond or masters. I feel two-thirds of my games decide by which team has the thrower. This is a actually very 100% true. Yes, this is a very extremely true and accurate statement. I, I think that that... I suspect... I don't have empirical data for this, obviously. But I suspect it's true where all of the very low end of any bracket probably is where you find peak throwers because like low diamond they're like ah, i got to diamond who gives a shit ah, i got to plat who gives a shit ah, i got to masters who gives a shit but like masters is that's like the one where people are like i finally made it you know because not many people have dreams of getting to grandmasters because that, that's hard right so like getting to masters is like what most people dream of so they're like i got there i did it hooray I proved I can do it. Now let's throw every fucking game. Uh, it, it, it's very trash, yes. Low Masters is probably the actual worst SR area to be in. Because it is... Oh, it's very bad, yes. How do I kill people as Genji? Usually I just kind of spam shurikens until either I get someone low or a fight happens, or I get a flank. That's exactly what you do. or And you wait till you have your ultimate. You just kind of poke at people, and then when someone's low, you go in, and if you get a really opportuni good opportunity, you just go in and like fan it, right-click right into their face and get a kill. That's like what you do, though, to get kills as Genji, and then, you know, Dragon Blade also. Uh, Retributo. Why skill rating is completely irrelevant to be a successful coach. I mean, you don't need to go sue... Oh my god, it's a fucking essay. Like, yeah, it... It's the same thing, like, obviously you don't personally need to be that good at the game to be a good coach, because, you know, professional support sport coaches, they don't typically play the game, you know, like, the... I wouldn't tell a sports analyst that he can't tell me shit about the video game until he dunks on Shaq, right? Like, skill rating is basically irrelevant to being a successful coach yes um you can know a lot about the game without being personally good at the game so i recently returned to the game and figured that i'd try my hand at competitive this season i don't know i don't know why i'm reading this i don't need further context this is the um performance base sr thing kicking in so uh get better stats which is not doesn't sound helpful but that's how you fix that problem Undocumented Doomfist alt buff. Meteor Strike seems to have an insane vertical hitbox now. I did actually think that the other day. I, I did actually think, wow, I got I got killed by that? Because <laughs> I was like way above the Doomfist where he landed, and I was like, whoa, I still died. Um, but I also never really saw Doomfist prior, really. So I don't know if it was always that way, and I just like never noticed. I did think that the other day, though, like, whoa, I was mad high, and it still killed me. If a healer main 3,500 plus SR had to solo Q in bronze, could they climb? Absolutely. Um, if they played Mercy, they'd have a harder time, but you absolutely could, yes. Um, if you're good at the game, you will naturally climb. That's, that's just how it is. It doesn't matter which role you play. Back in the game, can't stop losing. When I got to at my peak, I started playing this game against my friends. Happy. Uh, I've lost seven games in a row now, and I don't know what to do. I'm doing it. you. It's like seven games in a row is not like that's that just sounds like a losing streak, which which happens. Um, it's my arch really just in thought. It's, it's losing streaks happen, dude. It's just how it is. Why do I always lose to enemy Genjis? I'm okay. At, oh, you mean as Genji? Try not to fight the other Genji. There are certain matchups that are just a waste of time for both parties, really. Like Tracer versus Tracer, Genji versus Gen Genji versus Genji, Farah versus Farah, Tracer versus Genji, Genji versus Tracer. Like the, it's like the best case scenario is you kill the other person, obviously, but it will have taken you so long to get there, probably, that it you probably still could have found something more productive to do with your time. And there's also just the fact that like the other person can always leave, right? Like. Tra the other Tracer can always just recall. The other Genji can always just dash away, right? Like, it, it, 
just try not to fight the other one. Try to find something more productive to do with your time, if there, and unless you absolutely have to fight the other one, which happens sometimes. But typically, it's a matter one v one. You don't really want to get into because it's just a big waste of time. Usually, I don't know about console. Don't bass me if this is already posted somewhere. I'm running in a couple of da da da. When exactly is Shadow Step ideal to use? With the vulnerability on either end of the ability, I'm having trouble figuring out what use it has in end match, if any. So the idea is you you shadow, you are somewhere the enemy team can't see you. You use Shadow Step to go somewhere where the enemy team also can't see you. Um, for example, off the top of my head, Volskaya, you're attacking the first checkpoint. You can stand on the... facing the choke point. You can stand on the right side. Teleport into the doorway on the left side. They can't see you because you're behind the wall, and you're teleporting into the room behind the truck, so they probably still can't see you. And then you're behind them, or, you know, across the left-hand side, around the back, but I mean, you know. The idea is you use it from somewhere they can't see you to go somewhere where they also can't see you. And then you are in a flanking position, and you uh, try to make plays happen. Um, you bet you just don't want them to see you doing it, which is why that buff they put in a while ago to reduce the sound, because he used to just like basically yell across the entire map, "Death comes." Now he's actually like very quiet, which is very convenient because at the end it's basically a stealth ability. How to outplay the new Reaper as Rhyme? Uh, not sure what to do when they just walk past my shield. So. What I do when the other when the Reaper is trying to walk behind my shield is take the shield down, hit him once. As soon as it makes contact, put the shield up. Here's the thing with Reinhardt's hammer is it does have it does put momentum on the enemy player, right? Like it bashes them in a direction. So with the first swing, it always goes right. So the idea is take the shield down, hit him, put the shield back up after as soon as you hit him, and start going to the right because you're gonna knock him left from the with the momentum and then you put some distance between you and him and then you just keep doing that and you fire strike him as well and as I say, if you just like put the shields up as soon as you make contact and then just like keep doing that and like back and away like you go right as you hit him left uh it's harder for him to actually kill you that quickly and once a reaper draw like you've only got to hit a reaper like two or three times and they're probably just going to bitch out and leave especially if you hit him with fire strike as well so it, it's one of those things where you'll never kill the reaper it's more just about driving the reaper off really and ideally you have help as well but like that's going to vary heavily uh, just bash, put the shield up as soon as it makes contact, and then wince and repeat. Go right while he goes left from the momentum. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Getting some that happens. How can I learn to hit Fars and Mercies as Zenyatta or Hanzo? Practice a fucking lot. That's one of those things. There's no trick, right? Like it's just that's all muscle memory. You just have to practice until it, until you eventually start to get good at it. How do I practice a new hero without losing SR? You don't. Um, like, all right. If if you're practicing the mechanical aspect of a hero, you can play uh, Deathmatch, which is basically just all fighting all the time. So you can uh, help you improve your aim and stuff like that. Quick play is basically a waste of time because, and like Deathmatch is the reason I'm saying quick play is a waste of time is because people don't take it seriously. Like you can't even navigate the map like you normally would because the team is usually like. Two snipers and a May versus two snipers and a May. So, like, and no tanks, maybe one healer, maybe one tank. It's probably Roadhog. Um, like, you, it, it's such a waste of time for learning anything in quick play that it's just, uh, it's so detached from how competitive it is that you don't really learn anything. And you can say the same thing about Deathmatch, certainly. But if it's just, a, if it's purely mechanics, then, you know, there's that. But basically, you do have to just play them in competitive to actually get good at them, because quick play and deathmatch are so very different to competitive that there's only a minimal crossover, if any at all. So, unfortunately, you are just going to lose some SR learning how to play a new hero. That's just how life is. I'm sorry. Solo heal mercy plus sim. Does this work? I mean, you can so as long as you're playing a main healer, you can solo heal anything. It's just a matter of it being harder than if you had another healer. So, yeah, it can work. Uh, it's just hard. So, can someone review my VOD? 
Jump spam, the silent killer of aim and evasion. It's not even silent. People talk about that very frequently. What do you do when your team never regroups? Hope that they do start regrouping, because unfortunately we can't control other people as much as we want to. Ah, uh, da 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 reasons maybe why you aren't climbing to the rank you want is because you're bad. If you are a player who is around platinum rank and is aiming for diamond, but you aren't climbing, well, so you have a smurf account that is in a lower rank than you play on more than your main. This is the reason you aren't climbing then. That's... Not true. No, I don't agree with this. Um, mostly because I play on a variety of different Smurfs and a variety of SRs, and I don't feel like I'm not improving. From my own personal experience, I don't buy into that, because, like... Alright, uh, you're probably not improving as fast as you would if you just played on your main a lot more, but, like... You're not going to get worse at the same time, because that's not really how it works. So, how do 1v1 Reaper is D.Va? Um, the thing is that Reaper is supposed to win this fight. D.Va has more options compared to some other tanks, but you, Reaper is meant to win this fight, so it's difficult. Uh, basically, what you, what you want to try and do is hopefully you can get the drop on him, because D.Va does a lot of burst damage when she first uh, comes in on somebody, fly up to him, rockets, missile going, punch, just flying into them with shift and then meleeing them is 75 damage, plus you're going in with shooting and missiles, so D.Va does a lot of burst damage, so if you can get the drop on Reaper, that's going to help. The other thing you can do is, like, hold defense matrix over him, um... There's math that goes into this, right? Like, if you hold Defense Matrix over him until he has used enough shots that he can't take you out of mech, which I believe is four shots, if we assume he hits everything, he needs four shots to take you out of mech. So you can hold it over him, count his shots, then start shooting after that. Or you can hold Defense Matrix over him until you see him reload, then take it down, then start shooting at him. Um, but... That's about all you can do. Like, ideally, you've got health as well. The thing is that Reaper is meant to win that matchup. So the best you can do is get the drop on him or uh, Defense Matrix, count his shots, or wait until you see him start reloading and then take it down and start shooting at him. He's meant to win. So it's it's always going to be hard, and hopefully you have help, basically. Uh, can you give a bit of advice to a low plat Ryan man? Are there any specific targets I need to focus? When should I turn to help backline? Can I get through another shield with Shatter by being close enough? Ugh, don't do that, that's hard. What is a fair number of people to get in my Shatter? Specific heroes I should also should help solo Shatter. Alright, so uh, we'll go first to last. Any specific targets I need to focus? Not really, um, other than like if Genji's come in with like Dragon Blade, fucking try to beat that motherfucker to death, but... Uh, Reinhardt doesn't really like, f like, be your weapon's big AoE hammer, like, you, there's not really focusing that happens, because usually you're hitting a lot of people. Uh, if you try, you want to try and pin tanks usually, like, uh, you see me hesitate for a moment to say that, if you pin tanks, that's how you kill them, right? And the tank, like, if you can hit a squishy with a pin, that's great, but they're a lot harder to hit. And if you pin a tank, like, you kill them, right? Like the the other Reinhardt dies. You take the Diva out of Mech. You killed the you killed the Zario, the Arissa, or whatever like that, right? Um, but Reinhardt, there, Reinhardt isn't really one of those characters that has to worry about focus that much, except for if it's like Genji coming in with Dragon Blade. If someone very threatening is in here in your area, you try to kill that person, but it's not really a focus thing. When should I turn to help backline? If there's an off tank, if there's another tank. Let them do it, because Reinhardt should always be more concerned with the front line. Um, especially if they also have another Reinhardt. If uh, if your other tank is, like, neck deep in the enemy team because they do dove in or something like that, or you don't have another tank, then uh, turn to help them if, like, they're gonna die if you don't help them, basically. Because you really want to just focus on, like, blocking the front, but sometimes you do need to turn and help with, like, the Genji that's back there. But if you're going to do that, make really sure 
that the enemy team isn't like you're not going to get earth shattered when you turn around or something like that, right? Like this is why ideally there's another tank and you just let them deal with it. That's not always the case. If it's not the case, just make sure like if they're going to die barring outside resistance, turn and help them, but make sure you you aren't going to get earth shattered or something like that or die by doing so. And so like Sometimes you turning to help them might be more detrimental than if you just kept looking at the front line. Like, if there's, like, a fucking Widow over there, right, and you take the shield down, well, the person who was getting harassed by Genji might just get shot by Widow and die, which isn't much more help. So, uh, ideally, there's another tank, and you can just let them deal with it. Can I get through another shield with Shatter by being close enough? You can, but it's... V it's it's weird. Earth Shatter gets very iffy with line of sight sometimes, so you can... I don't really recommend it unless you can just like get really through the through the shield. It uh, Earth Shatter is weird like that, so I don't recommend trying it. What is a fair number of people to get in my Shatter? Two, like two is fine. Two plus, honestly, like um, it's one of the Earth Shatter charges really quickly, and if you can just kill two people, that's really impactful. I like, use Earth Shatter. Pfft, Two people died. Great. You killed two people with one ultimate. They're now fighting, like, 4v6. You won the fight, right? Like, two people is enough. Two plus is fine. Ideally, you get more, but two plus is a, a fine number. Specific heroes I should solo shatter. A, if they're very threatening, right? If, they're, if it's a very threatening person. Genji using Dragon Blade. That's hard to earth shatter, though. Be warned. Because the Genji's flipping around all over the place. Also, double jump can actually be high enough that the Earth Shatter won't hit him. So, but he's one. Uh, attack Visor, Death Blossom, any ultimate, basically, that you can stop with Earth Shatter is usually worth it. Uh, not Whole Hog sometimes. Um, so, very threatening people. Or, very important person. Like, you, I suppose they've got one healer. And you see that Mercy right there. Killer. They lost the fight because you just killed their main healer. Their only healer, in fact. So if you're going to solo shatter someone, it has to be someone very threatening or very important. Um, so someone using their ultimate or like Mercy and she's the only healer. Something like that. Uh, two plus is a, a fine earth shatter, though, because you just killed two people. Easy money. Won the fight. What makes a good May? you know where the H key is? Um, that's about it's about the summation. What hero should I know before playing competitive? I try and play try and know one hero in each category, but other than that, like whoever the fuck you want, really. Um, does bunny hopping actually make me go faster? No. Uh, ex Lucio like wall riding, but no, bunny hopping does not make you go faster. I would, you know, you ever seen like uh, go watch the uh. TAS speed TAS speed run of uh, Half Life Two, or oh, if only bunny hopping rat worked like that. Ho ho ho! Tragically, it does not. Um, or any uh, like Source Engine game because they 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 all worked this way where there, you bunny hop and you go faster, and there's kind of no cap on it. There's more to it than that. Just go watch. It's crazy. Uh, does anyone remember the Ultimate Pyramid? Some time ago I watched a very useful video called The Ultimate Pyramid explaining among other things to different categories. It looked like this. Oh, fuck. Oh. I see. Uh, there used to be a Reddit post. The video has been removed. We got further elaboration in here, because I'm curious. I'm the creator of the video. I actually made it private a, few, a day or two ago. I did this because I feel the video had little to offer, given how much Overwatch has changed, Metashit. That's fair enough. I should probably do that with a few of my videos. Yeah, I'm lazy, though. Uh, tips for managing defense matrix more efficiently. I mean, the point is uh, that you, uh, you use it to block things that are very important or to make sure the enemy, that your team don't get hit, right? Like you're blocking the shots that are coming at the mer Like somebody's out of position, you put it over them so they don't die. They get hooked, you put it over them so they don't die. Uh, you block like defense, you block uh, Death Blossom because it's really important. You block Tac Visor because it's really important. Uh, the, the issue people have is that they just they do just use it like, like as a panic button. Um, 
the goal the point is to use it for things to block things that are important not just any random trash damage that's coming in like most people do so just try to try to use it as little as possible um the goal isn't to have defense matrix up as much as possible it's up to have, have it up as little as possible same is also true of like uh reinhardt shield technically the goal is not to have block all the damage it's just to block the important damage should i force myself into playing lower sensitivity in order to improve uh, da, 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 da. i mean like a lower sensitivity is better typically but like if if you're if you feel like you're doing fine and you're like have to force yourself to play at lower sensitivity, it might not actually be better for you. But conventional wisdom is that lower sensitivity is better. Um, but if you have to actually like physically force yourself to do it, it might not work out for you. Uh, try it, and if it feels terrible, stop it. You know. Inconsistent when I play competitive versus when I play quick play. People are naturally inconsistent creatures. That's not very weird. Issues with aim. Uh, da -da -da. I make too small a turn or I flick too late. Is my sense optimal? I mean, uh, this is a very personal question. Like, is any, any sensitivity question you have, right? It's very personal. Just try, try a different sensitivity and see if you like it. If you don't like it, change it. If you like it, hooray. Play with that sensitivity. It's very straightforward. People really worry about this. The answer is literally, do you like your sensitivity? If no, change. If yes, keep it. <laughs> right? Like, this is how it is. Tips against Bridget is Genji. Uh, don't play Genji and try to kill Bridget. It's going to be mad hard, basically. Uh, so we'll go. We'll try it. We'll do one more page. Because uh, I don't feel like we've really said much, honestly. For master players wanting to have it not, uh, 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 I wouldn't be good at that. What are some good resources to learn tank positioning and general timing? I mean, good resources? I don't know. Uh, good resources is a really specific question, or a weird question. Um... <laughs> watch watch like high level tank players i guess and just try to um anytime you're watching like a higher ranked player with the with the express purpose of trying to improve just like ask yourself the whole time they're playing like why are they doing this why are they doing that just operate under operate under the assumption that everything they're doing they're doing for a reason because they probably are and just ask yourself, why are they doing this? Why are they Why are they standing here? Why are they moving this way? Why are they now moving this way? Why are they using their ability here? Why are they holding their ability here? Why are they using their ultimate now? Why are they holding their ultimate right now? Why did they engage right then? When, why did they fall back right then? Just keep asking yourself, be like the annoying five-year-old. Keep asking why every few seconds. Why are they doing this? Why are they doing that? Why are they doing this? Just watching the the video is not necessarily very helpful. You have to add, like, if the, if the streamer, YouTuber, whatever, is very vocal about expressing their thought process, that's obviously helpful. But if you're just watching them, um, just ask why are they doing this very frequently and try to figure out the answer. And you might not always figure out the answer, but always be a just always ask why are they doing this? And because uh, just watching it is not helpful. You need to know why they're doing what they're doing to actually like really learn anything from it. What points should I not play Tracer on? Tracer is one of those heroes that's good in like all situations. There are like no bad Tracer situations really, unless their team comp is just something really oppressive and difficult like. Uh, uh, Torbjorn turret locks onto you, Junkrat, Junkrat's hard to go in, so if they got, like, Torbjorn, Junkrat, that might be really difficult for you, um, but, like, Tracer is one of those heroes that's just, like, never bad, really, so, I don't, there's no point I can think of where I'm like, that's bad for Tracer, um, there are ones I'd be like, well, Genji's probably better, but, like, there's not really a bad Tracer point. Can I climb as Lucio? Absolutely. Uh, just... Play Lucio a lot until you get good at Lucio. If you want to play climb as Lucio, by all means, climb as Lucio. You can definitely do it. How do you warm up before a match? I don't. I just start playing the game. 
Um, I have played this game for thousands of hours, though, so, you know. List of resources I've been compiling. Here's a Google Doc link. This might answer the question from earlier. Uh, Discords and coaching, VODs and reviews, other useful links. Scrub Cup, number five, specifically. Competitive Overwatch Discord. I could not imagine a more wretched hive of scum and villainy. Guides, oof. Oh, we got a lot in there. We got Viola. All of the far ones are by Valkia. How strange. <laughs> it's, it's almost like he might be the best, like, far player. Um, I'm just, like, skimming through it. Fantastic visual Torbjorn guide by a Grandmaster player. <laughs> Bastion and Junkrat don't have anything. <laughs> are they the only ones? No, Reaper doesn't have anything either. Okay, I was like, are they the only ones? Bridget doesn't have anything, that's fair enough. Uh, other... Pre-nerf, pre-nerf, pre-nerf. What nerf? The recent nerf? What nerf are we talking about? Really in-depth guide, we're playing crosshair choices. I remember once seeing this really weird crosshair someone had, it just made me think about it. I remember seeing somebody who had this, like, it was literally just a giant block, right? It was like a block, like, this big, and there was just a little hole in the center of the crosshair. And I was like, that's the most stupid thing I've ever seen in my entire life. I was like, I get it, you know, it's like that thing where if you can't see properly, you hold like a piece of paper up to your eye with a hole in it. It helps your eye focus, I guess, kind of thing. I was, I was so stupid. Another post relating to Elo Hell. It's not even really a resource. Why are we talking about this? Uh, Overwatch subreddit for full tone and VODs. Uh-huh. Just, just one, just one actual VOD. Okay. Streamers per hero. Okay. I don't know any of those people. Oh, no. I asked Chipsa, of course. Shatter 2K. Very good. Uh, recommend. Pine. Very good. Sure 4. Very good. IDVQD. Very good. Um, Valkyrie. Yep. It's how you know someone's in, right? They pick far as like real name. Uh, Spirit. I don't know who that is. One of the only well-known Reaper mains out there. Oh, I don't even know who he is. Uh, I don't know who any of. I don't know them. Yet yeah, Fitzy here is the somber one. Striker. Old Twitch no longer exists. Unsure if he has a new one. Hmm. Pass real. Usually top 500. Oh, I don't know who that is. Seagull. Seagull listed for May. Okay. <laughs> IF Huey. The only, the only Torbjorn player in existence. This is, I know, this is... Alright, let's, let's stop this! Let's stop this nonsense, alright? New player needs help, alright? Let's <laughs> fucking look at a fucking list. Uh, I want to know what kind of things to focus on first. The fundamentals I should get down first before I start trying to learn more complex parts of the game. Positioning. Uh, alt execution is the most important aspect of the game, because alts are very important in Overwatch, and then positioning is the next most important thing. And then everything else. Uh, if you want to, if you want to make a pie, you must first construct the universe. If you want to play Overwatch, you must first use, learn how to use your ultimate. After you invent the universe, obviously. Need help finding a stat tracker. I use... Let me check that I have the URL correctly. Because I I don't think I actually... Oh, my mouse is not there. Hold on. One moment. I know this is also thrilling. Uh, yes. So, this... Hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Get out of here. That's not what I'm trying to... Fucking... This is the website I use. It's not secure. Oh, no. The horror. Um, you just type in your battle tag. Um, mine is... Don't ask. Um, there, there's a story. And I will show you what it looks like and why I use it. 
I'm working on update to a new season now, yeah. And this is how it works. Where it shows you what your SR is for every hero. And then you click on the hero and it goes, Alright, here's what you're really good at. Compa I'm kind of in the way, aren't I? Uh, it's like, here's what you're good at compared to people of your rank. Here's what you're bad at compared to people of your rank. And then it tells you what you're estimated to be. This is the only stat tracker I actually use. Because it actually gives you like fucking helpful feedback on what's going on, right? Uh, what does it say about Reinhardt? Yeah, damn right. Damn fucking right. <laughs> Look at that. Charge use, Earth Shatter. Nice and high. Oh, 42. Uh, hmm. On my Smurf, I managed to get positioning to actually 0%. And you know what the worst part is? The SR was higher. It, it estimated that I was like uh, 3,700. Despite my positioning on the Smurf actually reaching 0%. So uh, this this is the only stat tracker I use, Coder Watch, because um, it actually gives you feedback rather than just <laughs> oh, oh, rather than just like looking at a, a list of numbers and then extrapolating it out for yourself. This like gives you actual feedback. There's a really funny one for McCree. I don't have McCree stats, but uh, there's a really funny one for McCree, which is uh, Fan the Hammer usage. Because it says, Oasis isn't really sure if you're using it too much or too less. It just knows you're using it wrong. So I was, I was like, that sounds like Fan the Hammer. So that's the only stat tracker I use. And it's the only one I would recommend. This is the wrong window. Aha! Okay. Oh, every, what a disaster everything turned into suddenly. Alright, so. That's the stat tracker I use. Uh... I also use it to enable my bad decisions, because it's like, you're really good at charging. I'm like, I know. And then I go and push charge again. Well, around what level do you need to unlock every non-seasonal item? Would you need to be to unlock every non-seasonal item without spending money? Very fucking high. Um, I don't have every seasonal item, and my account is like silver with four stars, so it would probably be platinum if I didn't have like five smurfs. Um... Very fucking high, basically. They want you to spend money. I don't know if you know. I don't know. <laughs> Keep it on the down low. Don't tell anyone. Blizzard would very much like if you if you gave them all of your money. I know. I know. That might be startling revelation. I think I lost my way with tanks, and I'm not sure what to do at this point. Very dramatic way of phrasing it. I have never reached GM for about five seasons. Either... Neither have I, as it happens. Um, I don't get to, I don't worry about it too much, though. Let's talk about metal. Oh, Jesus Christ. Mouse acceleration help? Turn it off. I don't want to be limited if I've, on the other hand, turn it off. Turn it off. What do I add to my DPS roster as a gold support, as gold support main? He's my go-to in deathmatch, and I can definitely get kills with him. My problem is that whenever I play him in quick play, I feel like I have a glass cannon. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Even behind a shield, I feel as though I constantly need to be babied by my healers. Sounds like you're positioning badly. I feel like I need to be babied, but... I can play well with her, and I just just pick whoever you want to play. Like, just, just pick whichever DPS you like. Just don't worry about it. Can't decide a main. Play, play whoever, pick whoever you like. Just, whichever hero you like, decide that that's your main and then play it. <laughs> Don't worry about who it is. Play whoever you want to play. All right. 45 minutes? Oh, God. Just about. Just under. Oh, okay. All right. We're done. We went through four pages. Thank you very much for watching. If you did, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'm more than happy to answer. If you haven't already, you can join our Discord and have ask questions more directly and have a conversation about them and I hope you found the video helpful.